All right guys, uh, it's the day before Formula FPV event. I'll come down to do some video, but uh, the guys are pushed creating the layout. Uh, everybody's mucking in, Metal Danny's here with his tools, Chi Loi. Um, the guys, uh, Neil and uh, Jem are also here. And of course, this is, uh, this is Honey. She's been very helpful today. Uh, I'm going to run you around the course in a bit, but first of all, I just want to show you the bit where I'm going to be doing. <laughs> Bye, honey. I'm going to show you the bit. This is uh, the video interview tent. This is where I'll be conducting some very serious interviews, don't you know? Um, we're going to be talking to Metal Danny, uh, Mark from Video Aerial Systems, and some of the pilots, Banny UK, uh, Chi Loy, and the rest. And obviously, we'll be. Uh, we'll be talking to them, but a couple of the pilots out there now just testing out the the the, uh, the course layout. Look at that, see that? Look, where is it? There, that is awesome. There's a bridge with a tunnel and a gate, and then down the back there, where is it? There, that's the video aerial systems gate, which is a high gate. They've, the pilots have actually got to fly up and through and then down around the corner. So that's going to be awesome. I'll tell you what, no, no disrespect to the guys that did the Nationals event because they did an awesome job. But the layout of this event, uh, all, the other, all the other places need to be taken note, I think, of what's being done here. Uh, it is a lot of hard work, but this layout is incredible. Metal Danny's over here. Chi Loy, Chi Loy is here, he's been uh, down here today helping set up, what's your name? Tups. Tups? Yeah. Tups is here as well, Tups was also at the Nationals helping run the event up there as well and you've been here today helping everybody get stuff set up, slightly different layout to the Nationals, Yep. what do you think? It's going to be challenging, yeah. it's going to be, it's going to be good. It's spectacular looking isn't it, yeah. definitely, what are you running? Um, I've got my uh, trusty Emax. Uh, oh, you got an Emax 250. Yep. What is it? It's the uh, Nighthawk. Uh, Night That's yep. it. I can never remember the name of it. Yep. It's me, old faithful. Brilliant. So you're racing tomorrow, yeah? Yes, I will be. Good luck. Um, but I'll be race directing as well. So multitasking. multitasking. And they say we can't do it. Yep. Do you know what? My granddad could multitask. He could cough, sneeze, fart, shit himself all at the same time. That's pretty and good. They, they if, say if, we... if I could ever get to that <laughs> stage, I'll be a happy And man. they say guys can't do it. <laughs> See in a bit. See in a bit, mate. Metal Danny. Luckily they're quite big. Metal Danny. Metal Danny. Ah, secret stuff. <laughs> what do you think? Cool. Yeah? Yes, it's uh, very, very technical. Whoa. Oh my God. Fast. Some parts, this part is very fast, but what well, the body turns off. Hmm. I'm not good at that. That's my weak point. Plenty of time to practice. Plenty of time. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you got the wind here, huh? Yeah. So you need to. Yes. Yeah, I touched it one time. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah. Did you break anything? No, no. no. Nothing. Nothing at all. What proxy is? Uh, new ones, uh, Haku 635. 635? Uh huh. And who will I buy? HK. Yeah. And oh. I like them because you can fly the, the same speed when after 6045, but it, it doesn't go up. I got no. Uh, You're not getting the lift. Uh -huh. the, right, I'm with you. Ah. I like it. So there you go, guys. 635s, not 645s. What motors? You're a Cobra guy, aren't you? Yes. Yeah, for and free. If you cut metal down in half, it says Cobra in the middle. Yeah. Um, 24, oh, my GoPro is on. 20, 2404. 2404. Uh, yeah. 1960s. They're the ones I'm just doing a build. I love these motors. Me too. Yeah, really good. Going to check another lipo? Cool. I'm going to go back to the tent. Can we take a ch have a chat to you in the tent in a bit, yeah? Yes. Fantastic. I, I fly. Yeah, yeah. Have a fly, and we'll see you in a bit. Thanks, Danny. No problem, man. Metal Danny. <laughs> How cool is that? Come all the way to the UK, help to build the course, having a fly, we can have a chat. God, I wish I had something to fly. I really do, right. Gonna let Metal Danny have a fly. I'm sure not to get in the way of that. 
then we're going to have a chat to him we're going to have a chat to Mark from Video Aerial Systems and uh, then I think we'll have a walk of the course with one of the guys talk, talk you around the course and then that, that'll be it we'll wrap this video up and then I'll be here tomorrow covering the event for you then so let's uh, let Danny have a a bit of a race round and then, then we'll have a chat to him see you in a minute Danny, how you doing? Good. Yeah, thanks very much for uh, coming over to Formula FPV and mm -hmm. um, today. Bit of a journey, bit of a long journey for you. Yes, I think six, seven hours drive. Six or seven hours. And today you've not only turned up to the event to fly, you've also been setting the course out yep. with the rest of us. I helped the guys. Hard work, a lot of hard work. Yes, uh, yes. Yeah. Whoa, they got a lot of, yeah, the, the, the high air gate and other seen that before <laughs> yeah yeah it's definitely the, something different isn't it they're crazy uh, here I'm, I'm really liking this I thought it was like going to be really sort of agility based very very technical but this is still very fast isn't it you know it's fast and I think the right uh, place is very fast and the left is very technical yeah and whoa yeah I don't find my good line set but it's going to be difficult. Yes. Yeah. Staying cool. What do you think of the tunnel? The tunnel is great. Yeah. I like the tunnels. It, you, I, I was just watching you go through there a minute ago. I call it the Euro tunnel. The Euro tunnel. <laughs> a Euro, Euro tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> right. I um I asked our Facebook friends if they could give us a couple of questions for you because it saves me thinking of them. So we got a question from Luke Bannister, Banner UK. <laughs> He said, do you think you will beat Banny UK? No. <laughs> no. Cheeky little git. <laughs> Simon <laughs> Vance Kalina, what's this? Uh, Simon Vance Kalina has asked, are you a witch? Because you fly like a witch. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, yeah, pff, yeah, you need, in a race, you need to have more luck than skills, I think. I yeah. did a lot of racing and normally I'm not the fastest guy on the field, never, 
but the other ones mm, they hate yeah you got a lot of mid airs yeah you know and you need to have a lot of luck if you want to pass you're not in the in the nearby uh, air gate or yeah, yeah so yeah pass on the straight not for a yep, gate or in a corner and you need to know where is he is he on top of me or what he wants to go down to so yeah you need need luck I noticed you're flying with earphones in now uh-huh is that because you're listening for the other pilots yes I it's very annoying to hear oh, oh, e, oh, and the Tirana shit you know yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, telemetry and uh, two minutes uh, I get so you put the earphones in and that just sort of yeah, allows I, you to zone I got my Cobra sound yeah. from it and I love it love the sound it's of not, the Cobras it's not for the for the sound for the Cobras yeah. but I'm, I'm more into into it into yeah yeah it allows you to focus but yep, yeah yep right cool um excuse me a second um i tested in the drone nationals in germany and I, it worked but we sit with eight people like this yeah and there were a lot of people crashing and yeah they were was there eight people flying at one time at the yep. german nationals yep, with the immersion race band wow it's possible it is possible do you think it's better to race with four like we do or i don't care they don't know a more chance of a mid-air though i guess with eight people Eight people I flying. think with eight people you need bigger. I love the little gates. Yeah. But with eight people you need a little bit bigger gate. But because yeah, everybody flies the same. We got the same setup, and you see the guys here, they fly fast. Huh? Yeah. They fly faster like like uh, as me. And if they want to pass me or yeah, you got a problem. Once you want the the in the middle. And everybody wants to fly in the middle. Yeah, the yeah, area. that's for sure. Yeah, of course they go straight for the middle. It's not like everybody's thinking, I'll go through the right hand side uh-huh. of the gate. They're trying to go through the middle, aren't they? Yeah, I'm with you. I'll tell you, one of, one of the things that I want to ask, somebody asked us, is who do you think, actually, Nigel Tomlinson from the National UK FPV Racing Association, uh-huh. he asked, who do you think is the best pilot in the UK? Hmm. Or maybe who's your favourite pilot in the UK? <coughs> I got a yeah, I got a lot of favourite. That's pilots. putting you on the spot, isn't it? I got a Benny is super awesome. Uh, he got he's very skilled. I think if he stays cool, he wins everything. Yeah, I and, think you're uh, right. Jab one A. Jab one A, yeah. Yeah, he knows what racing is. Huh? He does it a long time, and he he never crash. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, yeah. not crashing is is uh, top three. Yeah, so yeah, it is, isn't it? I mean, that's the most important thing is getting around without crashing, yep, isn't it? Yep, yep. That and then speed. I see. I saw. I did one testing, and my time was rubbish. But I was nearby the other guy, yeah. Yeah. and if I want to pass him, I crash. So I wait for him. That was you <laughs> racing with Che Lao just now, wasn't it? Um, right, we've got a few more questions. Um, Mika Baumeister has asked a few questions. He's asked, how often do you train? So how often mm, do you fly? It depends on... In the summer, I go pff, five times a week. And like this, I go three times. Yeah, I got my work, I got my family. Yeah. How, how many batteries do you fly when you go out? Six. Six batteries. Yeah, but if I fly eight... I'm not concentrated anymore. Right, yeah, because it's difficult to concentrate for that amount of time, isn't it? Um, how many copters do you have? I uh, got all of them. Hmm, ten. Ten. And then normally I got one race squad, and the rest is for forest. For the forest flying. Yes. What do you use for your forest flying? The blackout, yeah. Yeah, yep, yep. But uh, I think I'm gonna fly the. We test the prototype from the Immersion Vortex. Well, that's right, we need to talk about that. Um, you're working with Immersion RC uh-huh. on a Vortex 250. Yep. Is there anything you can tell us? I know you, you don't want to talk too much uh, about it. But. I like it a lot. It's very, it's like a tank. Yeah. Flat arms, uh, the PDB, the, 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 what do you call it? Flight controller. The flight controller. It's on uh, clean, clean flight too. 
uh, yeah, you can the, the race band is inside of yeah. the, the VTX. You can put on a 25, 200, 350. If you uh, arm it, the MVs go higher. What do you call the, it in yeah. English? The uh. if I uh, on my start grid, I got 10 MV, and if I arm it, I got my 25. Oh, I'm with you. So the uh, the power of the video transmitter yes, yes. switches down when it's disarmed. Yes. And then when you're armed, yep. it So it if you crash, you don't disturb anybody else. If you crash over there, you can disarm it and your VTX goes down. Yep. Nice. It's super. That's the super feature to have built within a quad. So uh, I'm, take, I'm guessing the Vortex in its current format is a little bit too big for the racing tracks. Yep, yeah? yep. Yep. And this 250 Vortex that they're working on is going to be a specifically aimed at 250 racing. Yes, yeah? yes, yes, yes. I like it. I like the H model, the yeah. H symmetry. Yeah. And or X. But uh, if the arms are a little bit um, different as the front, I I don't fly it good. Right. So, uh, so yeah, I'm with you. So you prefer? I mean, you've been flying the Blackout Mini H. Yep. Ever since I, the beginning, almost, yep. haven't you? And you, I'm used to it. Yeah. So I suppose it makes sense for you to continue <laughs> within that format. Right. So we've got a few more questions. I don't want to keep you so long, son. I know you're very busy getting ready for tomorrow. Um. Uh, Lewis Dobson has said, why did he have to come to the UK on a weekend when my quad is out of action? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Poor Lewis. I love Lewis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I, I know the guy from oh, YouTube. Oh, right. So that's why he was like, <laughs> typical, you come to the UK when my quad's broken. Um, what is he calling YouTube? Uh, uh, it doesn't say. Yeah, it doesn't uh, I know it. it. I see his logo. He got some cover logo. Lewis, what's your name on YouTube? <laughs> Leave it in the description box because we can't remember. Is it live? Peter Parker, no, it's not live, no, okay. but um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they'll be able to. He'll be able to leave it in there. That'll be on. This will be on tonight. Um, it's Peter Parker. You know, I said earlier. He says, "How does he get his hair so silky smooth?" It, it's a uh, Gillette. <laughs> and scrub it, and uh, my wife does it. You does know? she? Yes. Lovely. My wife cuts my girlfriend cuts my hair, so that's all good. Um do you fly fixed wing? That's a good fixed question. Wing? No, no. You don't? I only fly quads. I started with that. Didn't didn't you used to fly a DJI NASA yes. in the woods? Yes. Unbelievable. I, I remember watching that. those videos. Yes, yes, yes. And everybody else is like NASA's just for hovering around and auto return, and you're flying it through yes. the woods between the trees. I, uh, I want to have a quad, and I was searching on the internet. Oh, that's look like a quad, and I buy it. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> flying a NASA 450. Yes, like I have the NASA on the blackout too. Yeah. Uh, nah, back yeah. Long time ago. Yeah, yes. I remember watching those yeah. videos. So. Metal Danny's flying a NASA <laughs> Blackout H mini H with three with points in the in forest. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant. There was no GPS on it. So you never flown fixed wing. You nope. can have a go. You're going to get yourself an FPV wing maybe at some point mm. and have a go now. Mm. You're firmly stuck in the world of multi rotor. Yes. Right. Well, there you go. There's you your answer. Keep it simple. Huh? Yeah. Sorry, guys. For, um, there's building going on all around us so there is a bit of noise and I'm afraid you're just going to have to put up with it. Um, what else was I going to ask you? What are you racing tomorrow? You're racing a blackout. Mm -hmm. right? Yep. I think for the last time. Last time for the year. And, and after that I'm going to fly the Vortex. You'll be in the Vortex. Not quite ready yet for racing. No, though. we are uh, testing everything. Testing the pits. We need the, the ECs. Yep. The immersion got his own ECs. Yeah, as uh, yeah, with the rotor yep. sense. But now they got new one, 20 ampere. Oh, nice. And uh, I was waiting for my six to put some six inch props on it, so yeah. I need longer arms. Props. You're running 630s, aren't you? HQ 635s yep. instead of the 645s. Yep, yep, yep. Was that? Yeah, I. 45 is too much power. My quad, if I want to fly full throttle, my quad goes like this. 
it and there's the gate. It climbs right. So and with the six sixty thirty five, my speed is the same, but it's going like this. So I like it. I like it for I did a uh, indoor racing in the Holland. It was cool, and I had the advantage advantage for from that props. I can more fly more on the throttle. Yeah, yeah. I noticed today you really did some uh, spectacular crashes while you were practicing <laughs> yeah, yeah, and testing yeah. the course out today, and you haven't broke a prop. No, yet they either. are better. I, yeah. I think. I don't know why, but. So there you go, Metal Danny. Thanks very much for taking the time to talk <laughs> to us, Danny. I'll be back here tomorrow, guys. Um, up next, we're going to be talking to Mark from Video Aerial Systems. Who's that? Mark. <laughs> That's Mark. There he is. So, Mark, how you doing? Good, how you doing? We're really good, yeah. Thanks for joining us on this uh, uh, monumental FPV, Formula FPV uh, maiden. It's not a maiden, is it? What's the word no. I'm looking for? Um, inaugural event? Inaugural. Yeah. There's a word. Yeah. An yeah. grill event. Yeah, see? <laughs> yeah. I knew there was a word for it. Yeah. Um, you've come all the way from Carolina? Uh, uh, from Virginia. 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 Yeah. yeah Virginia. In the United States. Correct. Two wet and windy, uh, wet and windy little islands. A little bit, yeah. Um, they uh, decided to get my clothes all wet in my suitcase, yeah. so that was nice of them. They did, didn't they? Yeah, thanks, <laughs> guys. If you work at the airport, you got his clothes wet. It's not good. So, what made you come over and support this event instead of something else? You know, I mean big company there's lots of events on in the uk what made you come over and support formula fpv um well neil cody reached out to me from iDrone and said you know hey we're putting on an event you know we'd like to be you guys to be involved and really get you back over here and get you out in the forefront out here so i was more than happy to do it fantastic you've sponsored the high gate at this event yeah. that's really going to have the pilot sat it and it there's a gate over at the back of the the track um, from where we're sitting now, and what is what was that? Thirty foot in the air? Uh, probably about eighteen to twenty, probably. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good, good nice little high gate. It's definitely get get up there and get you down. It's gonna be um, it's gonna be sorry sorry. I'm just waving to someone behind the camera <laughs> who's been helping us out today. See ya. So um, uh, it really is gonna be quite technical, isn't it? There's gate there's yeah. gates tunnels. Uh, there's the high gate. Um, something out there really to test all sorts of pilots one of the things that I know that they were saying they were struggling with the guys that are testing the circuit yeah. would, what, uh, was the video signal over the back there and that's right. where you guys yeah. excel in improving people's video signals right. um, what have you got this is a great segue yeah right <laughs> perfect gets right into it uh, <laughs> even if I do say so myself <laughs> So, um, what have you guys got on the you're on the belly? You know, what's um, what's up and coming? Are there any improvements to current antennas? Or? Um, well, you know, we just released the uh, race spec antennas in the uh, air blade left hand and the air screw right hand. Um, so that give all the racers a little something different. You know, some of the guys were complaining about the weight of the caps that we put on for protection. You know, they wanted something a little more low profile. So yeah. we worked on some little t modifications and tweaks to the current models and came up with the race specs and they're specifically for guys to race with good job uh, a company that listens to the community that they're providing a the gear for is one that's going to continue to grow yeah well if yeah. we don't listen to you guys we don't give you what you need you don't use our product yeah and somebody it, else will come up with it's it. a give and take you know we're more than happy to take advice from from anybody and says hey you know we think this would be better this would do a better job um if it was you know shorter or taller you know and we'll do some research on it we'll play with it and see you know does it work does it not you know put some put it in some hands of some testers and say hey what do you think and then take that feedback and we'll make adjustments as needed what kind of process does an antenna go through before it's coming out there you know before we can buy it what what sort of process is in place it's it's pretty simple um, there's nothing real special about it um, basically Alex I'd be crazy We'll sit down one night and he'll say, you know what, I'm gonna design a new antenna. And, that, and that's literally what it, the way it starts. And um, then he'll sit for a few hours in front of the camera or in front of the computer. He'll work on some simulations on some programs and he'll say, okay, this works, this doesn't work via the, the uh, simulation. And then once he's figured out that he's got something that per a simulation will work, he'll start building some prototypes. He'll start playing with some 
different cables and you know it's because Lang lang cable, cable lengths, lengths and um, whether or not we need to put balins on it, you know, trying to stop that signal from tracking down a cable, and um, and then what he'll do is he'll take that prototype and he'll go out and he'll fly, and he'll say, okay, I like it for this, but it doesn't work for this, so that design's out the window. Yeah, um, and then he'll come up with another form, another geometrical form for it, and say, okay, does this work? You know. Um, and he just sits there and manipulates it until he gets what he wants. And then what he does, once he has what he wants, he starts putting them in the hands of the guys at the shop that fly. And he's like, okay, tell me what you think. Then we say, okay, well, I don't like this because of this. Or I, when I was flying, it did this. Okay, well, what can I do to change that? Then from there, it really comes down to, okay, we have a final design. Can we actually manufacture it? Because some antennas you start manufacturing them or go to start building them and the tolerances are so tight yeah, that you not, just can't effectively it build it. It's not viable as right. a commercial product. Right. Yeah, but once we, once we have that manufacturing process down, we build up some uh, beta models and say, okay, here, you know, whoever that, you know, we decide to let put their hands on it and tell us what you think. Um, and while they're in the process of doing that, I usually go sit down with our graphic artist. We'll go through some different box designs, um, you know, packaging, making sure that at least we have some kind of graphics on the box yep. to display our name and, you know, let you know what you're getting. What's in the box. You know, and then get the boxes printed. Once the boxes arrive in the shop, the guys start building, um, and then we release it. You know, we try and get stuff out as quick as possible, but... You know, now I'm segueing. We got Alex has been working on the cyclone, for instance. You know, he's been working on that antenna for going on two years, um, and he just can't get exactly what he wants for the manufacturing process. He's got the design down. He's got the performance he wants. Now it's a matter of can I put this out there at a price point that's fair for us yeah. and for you? Because you know everything we build is handmade. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So our guys are sitting there. They're they're almost not building antennas. They're building works of art. I mean, that's the way that, that they take pride in their work. They really sit down and they make sure that every single antenna is what we would want to fly. And they're all tested as well and before they go is out. Tested, like yeah. the pasta. Exactly. They get they you know. the uh, the builder will test it, and he'll make sure that it passes our minimum specifications. Then what will happen is, is he'll take it down to the quality control room. Our quality control manager will sit down. He'll go through every single piece of product. He'll take random samples, and then he'll test them. They'll get boxed up after he's passed everything through QC. Then it goes in and gets put on the shelves, and then it's up to me. I'll go through, and I'll say, you know what? I feel like testing antennas today, and I'll pull random samples. Yep. So now I'm getting random samples of stuff that he's already randomly sampled. So we're making sure that the product, when it leaves, is going to work. Things happen between us and shipping. You know, that kind of thing can't be avoided. Uh, but, you know, we try and have a 0% failure rate out of the box. So when you pull it out of the box, that antenna works. It's going to work as advertised. That's worth paying the extra money for. You can buy an antenna off the shelf in China and get lucky right. and get good performance but they're cheap as Danny <laughs> Danny's flying into the tent <laughs> <you know. laughs> <This guy. laughs> he's mental that's metal not mental so you can get lucky with one of them antennas but you can, you're getting lucky I've, I've bought cheap antennas mm -hmm. and they'll get you out of a hole and they'll yeah, fly but then I've flown with the vast aerials uh, and other well-built, home-built antennas mm -hmm. that have been tuned properly, and they also perform really well. But they're not cheap, but it's worth paying that extra money, especially when you really do take into account everything that Mark said. The process, two years the cyclone, right. and you still haven't got it to buy mm -hmm. yeah. because of all the R&D work that's yeah. going in to make sure it's right. And that's why the antennas are in a price range above a lot of the other stuff out yeah. there. 
Um, but the experience I've had, I've just bought some air blades mm-hmm. um, uh, to run with my RSSI Pro Tracker because right. Alex said to me that the air blade is a, a really set up what to work really well yeah, with a helical, and that system will work well together. So look out for that on the channel, mm-hmm. guys. I'll be testing the air blades with the RSSI Pro Tracker coming up soon. So, is there anything else that the video aerial systems have got coming up, or anything else that they're involved um, with? Well, you know, we've got a few um, EPP aircraft. Yeah. Um, you know, we've got the Chimera. We just released the Wyvern, which is just a mini Chimera. It's got a little different airfoil, make it a little faster. Yeah. Um, for ring weight, wing racing. Wing racing. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit of a. And uh, yeah. Sounds but awesome. um, so that we just released that uh, release uh, that recently, um, and it's production form we're not 100 percent complete with all the stuff we want to do as far as packaging and graphics and all but we went ahead and released it, some small releases at some shows and things like that um we've got spark sport just came out um so for everybody that got the spark and wanted to put the twin tail on yeah. it and ailerons and everything and kind of soup it up we we actually uh took a took that we modified the twin tail slightly so that it was a little smaller than what people were doing because they were basically putting the specter tail on it yeah um and you can just hop that thing and up and just you can just blaze with it it gets extremely quick what's the one that you can bash into the ground and smash and tread on the that is that that's the specter that's the specter yeah that's the that's the quintessential basher aircraft i've got Incredible. four of them and you just can't kill them yeah um i've only managed to kill actually crash one so bad that it was like okay it's time to build a new one because you know it will take a beating they're epp yeah you put a you know you put a five a three to five mil lamb over it and and they will just they're like flying tanks i they really are because i'm going to have a go I'm, i've never flown fixed wing fpv so mm-hmm. i'm going to have a go i'm sort of getting into it over the next month um maybe that'll be a good plane for me to start on alex quite alex has been uh um, working with tricops as well. He's got a couple of tricops. He's, he's, got, he's got a Y6 and a tricopter. Correct. He's got, there's two tricopters that he's designed. Uh, the Trident, which is, um, I believe it's like a 180 or 200 class. Yeah, that's just around um, a 200, I think. And yeah. then he's got the um, the Cerberus, which, which is, is about a... six. Th- no, it? that's a, that's oh. also a, a, a tri. Right. Um, that one is a about a 300 class. Right, slightly um, bigger. And then he's got his Y6 that he's been working on. I don't know where he's at in the process of even really getting serious about production for that one. Um, a lot of fun but he, Y6. He, he absolutely loves that thing. Yeah. Um, and he will let you know he loves it. Mm. I mean, he absolutely loves it. So... Um, you know, I'm sure we'll see it soon. Yeah, yeah, know, I hope um, so. Yeah, I'm, I'm also a massive fan of tricopters. Uh, <laughs> and Y6, I'm developing a myself one at the moment as mm-hmm. well. So, yeah, and I'm with I'm with Alex there. We look really look forward mm-hmm. to seeing those. And uh, well, we obviously look forward to seeing a Cyclone as well yes. when that's finished. Yeah, I wouldn't expect um, that for a while, though. That's... Another six months, maybe... I hope so. We're looking. We like I said, we've got the design down. Alex is happy with where it's at. Now it's just a matter of the way he wants to do the production on it. Yeah. We have to talk to some people and see how we need to go about that particular process, because the process for that is going to be totally different than what we do for everything else. Brilliant. So there you go, Mark from Video Aerial Systems. You looking forward to tomorrow, Mark? Absolutely. It's the only reason I came up here. It's a long way to come. Yeah. It? Yeah. <laughs> to not watch it. So. Yeah, no, it's going to be a good event. Um, yeah. I think what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take a little look around the course. Okay, that sounds good. Cool. On you guys, it's true, really nice True style. vlog style. Perfect. Let me take one on yours for you. I see his video. I'm doing video. Do you want to say All hello? Right. <laughs> hello. It's Banny's mum. Yeah. It's Banny's mum. <laughs> FPV mum. This is Banny. It's fine. So, guys, I'm with Neil. Uh, in the last moments of daylight on a Saturday before the event, we're just going to have a quick walk around the course and show you the uh, the course before we uh, for, before we finish up. Absolutely. Right, Neil, how you doing? You I'm all right? I'm good, thanks. Yeah. No um, Neil from my drone. Uh, you're part of the team that's made yeah, myself Formula and, FPV. Yeah, myself and Jem from Drone Junkie. We uh, thought of, this is our brainchild, and we sort of put this together. And over the last three, four months, um, it's all sort of from a 
drawing and a scribble and it's now here so uh, we're you know chuffed to bits we've had this none, none of this could be done without the help we've had from the guys here no, Chi Lau's come down, Luke Banner's just yeah. turned up, Banner Metal, UK. Metal Danny's Metal been here Danny. since, we've all been here since like 10 o'clock, we haven't stopped. Everyone's just worked their socks off and it's, I'm just chuffed to bits. We've got the start grid at the front here, um, we've got our uh, Formula FPV and our main sponsors, Video Systems, um, together with the uh, British FPC, FPV Racing Association. Uh, start grid. Okay, so uh, first off the grid, the uh, first gate is the start finish grid which they all have to pass through. So it's gonna be a bit of a battle to get round through there, but this is the first of many of the gates through the uh, course. Okay, so we've got a four meter ramp. Once they come through the uh, start grid, they're coming round to the left. They've got to rise four meters up through the top of this ramp where they continue through the course. So once they've come through the uh, top, four, top of the uh, first uh, high gate, they're gonna come round to turn two, and they've got to get back down for the first of the ground air gates. Uh, and then left towards the uh, chicane okay so we've got this is turn three we've got metal danny's uh, own one of his sponsors multirotorparts.com uh, around this uh, wide uh, third uh, turn around towards the chicane so we've got the first of the uh, vas video aerial systems one of their uh, our main sponsor of the event one of their gates which is now leading us around from turn three uh one two three turn three into the uh, entrance of the uh, chicane uh, we've got local sponsors uh, sponsoring each of the uh, obstacles to try and raise money for the event. So turn three, we've now into uh, the first of the uh, chicanes. We've got the uh, gazebo gate, which we're going to go through, and then round to the right into the second one, which will lead us into the uh, uh, fourth or fifth turn. Got our own hydrone flags here. Uh, round from turn five through into the second of the gazebo gates, uh, leading you round uh, towards the back to the main street. So we're down to turn six into the special tunnel we've got again from devil quad to sponsor the, the tunnel six meter long tunnel which is going to look great for both pilots and the spectators so again we've got a vas air gate um, straight through to the tunnel this is sponsored by devil quads a six meter low nice long long dead tunnel just leading you straight through we've got about uh, about 100 110 yards up to the uh, high gate so from the uh, the long devil quad um, six meter tunnel that's going to lead the pilot straight up now we've got a big high four five meter gate again sponsored by VAS this is their high gate um, fantastic sponsor they've been 100% behind us with this event today and uh, their guy Mark Ashton their operations manager he's, he came over four days he's worked two days for us today to try and get this event done he, he hasn't sat back he's just helped us fall on so hats off to him he's done done us proud so uh, Hopefully we can do him proud tomorrow. So we're round now to turn seven. Uh, again, one of the VAS uh, turn poles down. You probably got a 50 yard uh, down through the next gate, down leading down into the next corner. So this is the last of the air gates. <laughs> That's Luke playing around. Uh, this is the last of the air gates uh, before the final turn. Again, former FPV. Um, logo looks fantastic guys so they're going to go right the way through here this is the last of the turns before the final straight last obstacle call uh, for them to come around right hand turn this is going to have uh, balloons uh, hanging from it some will be full of powder some will be full of maybe some aerial so if they manage to pop a balloon in the game around they're going to win an aerial as well so everyone's a winner <laughs> 